Hey folks, Lemonade here, and today we have the holy grail of mice for true aimers only, the Aces Rog Harp Ace Aim Labs Edition. Is this mouse justifying its $150 price tag, and was the Aim Labs collab even worth it? Let's get into it right after this. Quick disclaimer, Asus and AimLab did send me this free for review, but that will never change the outcome of any video on this channel. My opinions are my own and you are seeing this as early as they are. If you decide you enjoy this video while watching at some point, don't forget to like and sub down below. It does help the channel out a lot. Thanks. Okay, so let's get the specs out of the way and I'll throw them right up here for you. So AimLabs made a mouse, but why? I mean, aim training and working on the craft of aiming has been on the rise over the last few years, so while I wouldn't have guessed that they wanted to even make a mouse, especially with Asus, because, well, I'm not really sure of any pros or aimers that particularly use their mice, it does make sense to a certain point to get into the space. But if one of the premier aim training programs decides to make a mouse, it better absolutely nail it from its shape, weight, balancing, clicks, the whole package. This is a collab that the aiming community is going to scrutinize more than any other. So did they nail it? Well, yes and no. The mouse is actually pretty fantastic, but the software experience is, well, anyway, we'll talk about it in, in a bit. And starting off with the packaging, it's actually filled to the brim and we can tell that Aimlabs is really proud of this moment from their logo being literally everywhere on the box and on all the stuff that comes in it from this a carrying pouch to the stickers here, this card with all the main people from Aimlabs like Ron Rambo Kim signing it and this little envelope that comes with some additional goodies. And a quick note, the mouse itself has an Aimlabs logo on this side. It actually shines under UV light, which isn't mentioned anywhere on the website or in the packaging. So this is a quirky Easter egg, I guess. So inside that little envelope, we have an extra set of skates, and these are a bit different than the four corner skates that come stock on it. So it's nice that they give you an option for a little bit more of a controlled glide if you prefer. Speaking of the skates themselves, they are super nice and exceptionally well-rounded. I honestly would not replace these for third-party ones if you can find them. You also have this really high quality and thin grip tape. Reminds me of core pad grip tape. It's actually quite nice. I didn't use it personally though because the texturing on the mouse is actually really solid. They have an almost like powdered coating feel on the back side of the mouse here. Then on the side, as you can see, you have these nice ridges for extra grip. And then mouse one and two, you can see here in, in the video as well, are actually kind of textured in this PBT style finish. So it's this kind of unique combination of three different choices to get you really an optimal grip with the stock coating. And then we have the dongle adapter over here. Now, normally I don't talk too much about this, but they did something different that I've never seen before. It actually has a clip at the bottom. So the clip itself doesn't clamp down like too tight. It depends on your mouse pad and how thick it is, to be honest. It's a cool idea, I guess, but having something kind of sticking on to your mouse pad like that is not the best, at least for me, because I kind of play near the edge and it's just kind of, going to get in the way at some point. It didn't while I was testing, but it may be a cause for concern. So honestly, I just left it off my desk like I normally would any other adapter. So let's dive into the actual mouse itself. And first order of business, are there any QC issues? And I'm happy to report absolutely 
nothing. And I really want to commend Asus here because they did an exceptional job, especially for its weight. It's hands down probably my new QC King. First off, there's just like zero side flex. I mean, it almost feels like it's like steel reinforced or something on the side. It's so damn rigid. Scroll wheel is perfectly centered. All the button clicks are beautifully tensioned and very crispy. I'll show you a sound test here briefly and also show you that there is just zero side to side play on the main switches. Now the clicks themselves are Aces branded ROG micro switches rated at 70 million clicks. They are really crispy feeling and sharp, slightly heavier than what you would find in a lot of your kind of Kales and Omrons. These have a very little or pretty much no pre-travel and just a touch of minor post-travel to get you a bit more bounce. They remind me a lot of Ninja 2's Juano switches and implementation, to be honest. Not the most spammable switch out there if you need that, but they're really satisfying nonetheless. So while we're down here, quick note, we do have storage for your dongle. You can see the larger cutout at the top for the fatter mouse get that they give you in the box if you want to use that. You have a DPI button on and off and a pairing button for Bluetooth. Yeah, Bluetooth on a gaming mouse. It also has uh, RGB in the scroll wheel as you've probably seen throughout the video. And if you were paying attention at the start of the video, they include all of this for still only 54 grams of weight. That's really impressive considering there are plenty of other mice out there without RGB that weigh more like the Viper V2 Pro or even the Lamzu Atlantis. That said, this mouse is kind of targeting the aim community and I'm not sure Bluetooth or RGB is the right play here. Honestly, better to have just omitted them to reduce the weight even further. But again, I'm going to give them a pass just because it's, well, still really lightweight, including all that stuff. Now the sensor, as you saw, is the 3395 and I can happily report it feels no different than any other sensor implementation in game, which is a good thing. It works flawlessly and they do tout less than 1% CPI deviation all over the box. And when I measured it I, on mouse tester, it is a really tight spread, which is great to see. But also when compared to the Vaxi XE review coming soon in the high speed and motion sync mode, which both enabled at the same time, they are pretty much neck and neck. And as you can see in these shots here, anyway, I show these graphs for folks who like to see this, but I also want people to remember just because something is a visually measurable on a graph doesn't necessarily mean that's perceivable in real world use. So the first part of this Aimlabs cloud is actually the shape and design of this. Now Aimlabs obviously has a software component, which we will get into in a moment, but they did help design and influence every part of the shape through many iterations. And it's really, really, nice for claw and palm as most of you know who watch the videos regularly i'm a person who uses fingertip grip and while the website says it works for fingertip it's not optimal i mean yeah you can use it it's just not the best mainly due to its length at 128 millimeters long but it's fairly narrow and flat overall so if they had just cut down the length of it to 122 to up to 123 at the most i think it'd be perfect even for fingertip anyway for claw and a palm it's really lovely it kind of has this gpx style hump almost a potato shape towards the back but with it being a bit more narrow and tapered at the front and a bit lower in general compared to a gpx that's just an improvement to that shape in my eyes okay so the mouse is damn good but what about the software i mentioned before yeah so let's start off with asus armory crate software my god this thing is awful i mean you can see the horrendous stories on reddit but I didn't believe it, but when I installed it, it's just so clunky and slow. It's bloated with so much stuff. You know, I never get bothered by mouse software. Even the Steel Series 1 functions quickly and updates fast when I need to use it. I'm not even kidding when I'm saying this. It took me like a good 15 
15 minutes or more just to install the software, not download, install. It just kept going and going and doing stuff in the background. I mean, listen, Asus needs to completely overhaul this thing. It's horrid. Funny story, when I was writing this review, I attempted to load up Armory Crate again to grab some screenshots and it seemingly somehow uninstalled itself. And then it needed to do a full reinstall. And then guess what? It did it again. Oh, and it couldn't find the mouse anymore when it finally decided to load up. Anyway, Aces, please redo this whole thing. When users need to change settings or most importantly, update firmware, this is a huge pain. Now, a saving grace to this is you can actually change a lot of the settings on the mouse itself, like the polling rate, DPI from four different presets, liftoff distance, and how you want the RGB to look all from these bottom kind of combination of buttons that you can click and hold but you cannot disable the rgb from the mouse so that's a big miss you can only just cycle through different looks now last part the actual you know aim lab collaboration integration part of it in the software now i'm not going to go too deep into it because well it's highly overrated <laughs> i mean essentially it brings you through four different scenarios to dial in your mouse settings. Now, anyone who uses A-Labs can do the first option, the sensitivity finder, but the following three options are locked specifically for this mouse. Now, in total, it will take you about 30 minutes or so to do all of this. And at the end of it, it gave me the sensitivity that I normally use, which is good. But then it said I should use a DPI of 1050. Wait, what? I mean, First off, why? It really makes zero sense to lower my DPI from 1600 as there is very, very minor latency differences, yeah, but also again, why 1050? It's just such an odd recommendation. You know, normally you see 800, 1600, 400, something like that, just 1050 is just such an odd move. Anyway, uh, then the angle tuning, they left it at zero, which yeah, I think it should be. And they also determined that I should use low liftoff distance versus high liftoff distance. I mean, yeah, of course, that's probably most optimal for most people. Anyway, this could be helpful for someone maybe newer to mouse and keyboard. Sure, I guess it's not perfect, but you know, it gets you some bearings. And I think if you run it a few times, maybe you'll get a clearer picture. But I think most importantly, this is an aim lab collab. The people who are going to want to drop $150 on a mouse with an Aimlabs logo are going to be your most dedicated grinders, not particularly someone who's brand new to mouse and keyboard. So I'm kind of torn here. If you look at this as just a mouse, it's so damn good. I mean, I legit can't reiterate enough how well they knocked nearly every aspect out of the park with this. The clicks, the weight, the shape, texture, rigidity, sensor implementation, the RGB, it has Bluetooth and it's all for 54 grams. Add in all of the extra goodies in the box too. It's impressive. But then you look at the Armory Crate mess and how lackluster the actual Aim Lab integration is. It just kind of takes away from it a bit. A bit. So let's wrap it up then. Is it worth 150 bucks? Well, I think if you want to look at this seriously and look at the entire landscape of gaming mice out there and compare it to other mice that are $150 like the GPX or the Viper V2 Pro or even the Dave, it definitely deserves to be in the conversation considering how well everything comes together. So yeah, 100% it's worth it but I would not buy it for the Aimlab software stuff alone, and I definitely would not recommend installing Armory Crate. Well, unless you want to turn the RGB off or update the firmware, and at that point, good luck. And on that note, all my socials are down below along with any affiliate links and discount codes. If you had a good time with me today, likes and subs are always appreciated. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts were. But until the next Fresh Squeeze video, stay thirsty, folks.